everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that are coming out in the second half of the year that I am either excited about and definitely going to pick up or that have kind of just intrigued me or I've heard a lot about. So not all of these books are books that I'm going to like run out and go get right away when they come out. Um, a couple of them are. So something I've been doing this year on my channel has been to every month read a current 2019 release. And I've tried to kind of keep that to the month that it comes out in. So like if it's July, I read a July book. And if it's June, I read a June book and so on and so forth. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen exactly that way as we continue into fall and winter. However, I'm going to do my best to keep it that way. So what I did was I picked a couple books from each month, except for December because I'm a little unsure about December. There weren't a lot of books that I was interested in coming out in December, except for one and it's a sequel. And I will need to read the first one, obviously, before I pick it up. So I have two books from September, two books from October, and two books from November. Let's go ahead and talk about my picks. The first book I'm going to talk about is one that I plan on pre-ordering and getting right away. And that book is The Harp of Kings by Juliette Morillier. Morillier? Morillier. I'm not sure how to say her name. Now this is maybe a little bit of a stretch for me because I haven't read any of her other books. She writes a lot of fantasy series that are sort of Celtic in nature. And I've heard great things from Jean, from Jean's Bookish Thoughts, who is one of my favorite booktubers. And she raves about Juliet Morillier. And I have always known that I really needed to pick up her books, but just hadn't really gotten around to it. And I saw that this is coming out September 3rd. And it is the first book in a new series. I believe it's a bit of a spin-off from one of her previous series, but from everything I've read about it, I think I can jump into it without having read the previous book. This book follows 18-year-old Leoban, and she is a expert singer and a whistle player, and also it follows her brother, who is also a great singer, and he also plays the harp. And these two young musicians are trying to get into this elite warrior band on a place called Swan Island. And they have to train and compete against other people to be part of this band. While they are training, they are sent on a mission, a top secret, super important mission, in order to go and find this missing harp. And this harp has perhaps magical powers of some sort. I'm not totally clear on that but this harp is going to play for the coronation of the next monarch. And if this harp is not played, then the people will revolt and the monarch will not be um, accepted by the people. And so it's really important that they find this harp. So they go on this adventure to go find this missing harp. When I describe it, it sounds kind of lame, <laughs> to be honest. However, I've heard just amazing things about this author and it kind of seems like it's right up my alley. I mean, anything involving music and musicians, I'm always down to try out and it sounds like it has some potential. The synopsis does sound a little cheesy though, however, I'm, I'm going to try it. We're gonna try it. Another book that I'm very interested in coming out in September is The Institute by Stephen King. This book also comes out September 10th and it is about a young boy named Luke Ellis and he lives in suburban Minneapolis and one day he wakes up to find his parents have been murdered and he has been taken to a strange place where his room looks just like his room but there's no window and he discovers he's at a place called the Institute. And the Institute is a place for young children with telekinetic powers or telepathy. I get some it vibes from this and Stephen King always does a really good job when he has children protagonists. I really enjoy his work in which that happens and so this I think has a lot of potential. It sounds very scary. It sounds gruesome 
and I am ready for it. I've only actually read one other Stephen King book and that was The Tommyknockers and it was okay but I am a really big fan of the movie adaptations of Stephen King. I've seen quite a few of them and I just really admire the man for his creativity and I don't mind a dark story if it's done really well and he knows how to do them well. The next book that I have to talk about is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This book comes out in October, early October, October 8th, and this I am not actually sure I'm going to pick up immediately because I haven't read any Lee Bardugo. I'm not sure that I like her yet, and this would just be picking it up for the hype train because this book is so hyped, but maybe it's worth it. I don't know. A lot of people love Lee Bardugo. I've heard mixed things though. I own some Lee Bardugo. I own the Grisha trilogy and Six of Crows and Cook Crooked Kingdom, but I have not gotten around to them and haven't felt super motivated to read them because it's a series and it's gonna be kind of involved and take me time. However, I will get to them but should I get to Ninth House first? Is this the right book to start with? I don't know. I don't know. Because this sounds like a, a new adult book. It is set in college at Yale University and we follow this young college student who is mysteriously offered a full ride at Yale because that happens. But when she's at Yale she gets pulled into a secret society and there is some occult activities and from what I understand there's a lot of graphic content in this book. I'm not big on the graphic content. I tend to not like books with graphic content so my instincts are telling me not to read this book but the hype train is telling me to read this book. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this but I thought I would mention it anyways because it is a potential book that I am considering picking up. However a book that sounds like my cup of tea is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis and this is an author that I haven't read but again have heard amazing things about. She writes historical fiction, I think primarily, and this book just sounds like it's in a beautiful setting. It sounds like it's got an intriguing story, and I think I'm leaning towards this one for my October pick. This comes out October 1st. This book is set in Madrid, Spain in the 1950s. At this time in history, Spain is under a fascist dictatorship, and they are recovering from the very recent Spanish Civil War. And what happens in this book is a young man goes as a tourist to Spain with his family. It is his mother's home country. This young boy's name is Daniel Matheson and Daniel is a photographer. He somehow meets Anna. I'm not sure how they meet but they meet. And Anna is a young girl whose family was deeply affected by the Spanish Civil War and they are still sort of experiencing the repercussions of all of that. This sounds really interesting. The cover is beautiful. This author has a lot of good rapport and so I'm very much leaning towards this one. I also haven't been reading a lot of historical fiction lately and I think that's a shame because I love historical fiction. It is I think one of my favorite genres and this sounds, this sounds pretty decent. This next book is one that I am going to get the second that it comes out and that is The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is the third book in the Ark of the Scythe series and I'm not sure how many books are planned exactly for this series but this is a really interesting dystopian world in which death has been eradicated from the face of the earth and in order to sort of control the population we have these people called scythes and they decide who lives or dies. And you never know when a scythe is going to come to your door, ask for dinner, and then chop your head off. The second book in the series was amazing and it left off on a big cliffhanger and so I am literally dying, dying guys, literally dying to find out what happens next. The Toll comes out on November 5th and I'm going to get it the second it comes out. The next book that I have to talk about is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I think this is a standalone and not part of a series and the synopsis just sounds beautiful. Erin Morgenstern also wrote The Night Circus which was a very popular book. I haven't read it yet. What else is new? 
But in this book we follow Zachary and Zachary is a graduate student in Vermont and Zachary while looking through some stacks in a library discovers in a book a story from his childhood which is very strange and mysterious and what happens next is it leads him on some adventures and he follows some clues and he discovers an ancient library hidden underground. That premise alone just sounds really intriguing and like a beautiful setting and I will read anything set around a library. That's just kind of a rule of thumb. So I will definitely be picking this up eventually because it sounds fantastic. And the last book that I want to talk about today is a sequel and I haven't read the first one yet but I own it. So that would be Children of Blood and Bone which is on my shelf over here. The sequel is coming out and I believe the sequel is called Virtue and Vengeance? A Virtue and Vengeance? Something like that. This is an African fantasy young adult and it has gotten a lot of hype. There's a movie coming out. I bought the book. Need to read it. I would like to read it before this comes out. This comes out in the very beginning of December. But again, I can't really tell you much about it right now because I haven't even read the first book yet. So I'm gonna do that first. Those are all the books that I'm excited about coming up in the second half of 2019. Let me know if you're excited about any of these or if you have any other suggestions for some books that I might be interested in picking up. I obviously probably won't get to all of these, but hopefully I get some good ones because my new release adventure has kind of been a hit or miss. I feel like a lot of the duds that I've read this year have been new releases. So I'm hoping that the second half of the year really delivers. I hope you're having a great day or a night and keep reading great books. I will see you in my next video. Take care.